Hello chess fans, fans of the beautiful game, this is Chess to Impress. Today I will tell you about the adventures of the 13th world champion Garry Kasparov in the Blitz Challenge, the ultimate Blitz Challenge in St. Louis in April 2016. Kasparov retired in early 2005 and he has come out of retirement a few times. He played matches um, against Nigel Short and against Anatoly Karpov, but this in April 2016 was the first time that he took on the world elite. There were four players in this ultimate blitz challenge, the three strongest players from the United States of America, Hikaru Nakamura, Wesley So and Fabiano Caruana, and there was Garry Kasparov. They played over two days, 18 rounds, so six games against each other and I will show you Kasparov's nightmares nightmares with a K because on the first day Kasparov blundered three knights in four in five rounds this is the position Wesley so white and Gary Kasparov black and this is the position after 24 rook a8 to c8. If you count the material, you can see black is a pawn up. He has two passed pawns, connected passed pawns on the queen side, and he's clearly better. All his pieces are active. Here, so played rook f to d1, and now there's different options for Kasparov. One move would be to start. Running with the pass pawn, a7, a5 is a move. But here, Kasparov played the inexplicable move, knight from b5 to c3. Not clear what he was trying to accomplish with that move. And after the very simple rook d1 to c1, Kasparov resigned because he's going to lose that knight that just jumped into white's position. Knight cannot move because the, it's pinned because of the rook to the queen. A bitter pill for the former world champion. That was from the fourth round. We jump three rounds to round seven. And again, Wesley So was the lucky one. Here Kasparov is white and Wesley So is black. And it's the position after 39 rook a2 to a6. Kasparov is winning. He has bishop and knight for the rook. But it's very clear what the trump card is in this position. That is the pawn on b6. A good move here would have been knight b5 with a double threat. The queen is, queen is threatening the rook on f8 and also there's a knight fork on c7 in the position. Queen f7 is a move that would deal with both threats. But then Kasparov can push his pawn, rook b8 to control the pawn. And now there is already a combination in the position with bishop takes e5 just to open the c-file. f takes e5 and rook c8 check and white is winning easily. Kasparov did something else. He played rook b1, supporting the pawn, rook b8. And here, because the pawn is attacked twice by both rooks, the only move to keep an advantage is knight c4, just protecting the pawn. But Kasparov blundered. Of course, these are blitz games, so there's no, it's not, no surprise that many mistakes are made. He played b6, b7, and overlooked that the queen or the rook can take the knight on d6. And after queen takes d6, Kasparov resigned. The third nightmare for Kasparov happened 
in the next round, the eighth round on the first day, White Hikaru Nakamura, who, by the way, won the Ultimate Blitz Challenge. Wesley So ended up second, Kasparov was third, and Karuana was fourth. But this is the eighth round, and Nakamura White, Kasparov Black, and this is after 43 Knight C6 takes the Rook on D8. And the position is about equal, maybe slightly better for Black because of the poor position of the White King. Here, perfectly normal move, of course, is to take the knight back, king takes d8, and then white can equalize the material by, for example, rook takes b4. And the position is about equal, it will probably end up in a draw. Kasparov thought I will um, make this into a better variation. He played the in-between move rook d5, and now both knights are attacked. But he had overseen that after knight takes f7, he cannot take the knight on d3 because of the knight fork, knight e5 check. And the king moves and knight takes d3 and white is a rook up. So he had overseen that. He played knight g4, but lost the game very quickly. I'll show you the remaining moves. Knight f e5 check forces a knight swap and then rook c6, king has to go back. King g1 activating the king. Kasparov tries with his passed pawn. Rook d1 check, king f2, rook d2 check. And if now after king f3, Kasparov plays b2, then they're simple, knight g4, and the h2 pawn is protected, and the b pawn is not going anywhere. So Kasparov took on h2, trying to make something with his h pawn, but after knight g6 check, he resigned. Because both pawns will not be a threat. For example, king f7, knight d5 check, king e8, and simple takes on b3 and black has no more ideas. Now this is not a very nice treatment of the 13th world champion showing him how he blunders a troika of knights. So let me show you the position from the last game, the 18th game, on the last game of day two, white Fabiano Caruana, black Kari Kasparov, a king's Indian, and Kasparov played like in the old days and won a beautiful game. This is the position after rook e5 to f5 check. Just look at the position, all, all black's pieces are all over the white king and there's a forced checkmate already in the position. Knight f3 is the only move, the king doesn't have any moves. And yes, it was a bad day for a bad tournament for Kasparov's knights, but here he takes a knight and this forced Karana to resign. Rook takes f3 check. If bishop takes, then there's Queen g1 checkmate, and if queen takes, there's e takes f3, and apart from being a lot of material up, black also has a mating attack. Hope you liked these positions. If you did, I hope you will give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. This is Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.